On January 24th, Premier McGuinty conceded that the sides are, quote, in a clear deadlock and despite our best efforts to bring the sides together, that has not changed, end quote. We have called, recalled the Legislature on a Sunday afternoon as soon as we heard word of a deadlock, and we call on all members, particularly those in the new Democratic Party, to remove the obstacles so that we can bring 50,000-plus students back to the classroom. This isn't deadlock, Speaker. This is a university that decided we'll lock out the students, we'll put them in the street, We'll go through the motions of making it look like we're interested in bargaining, and we'll just string it out, string it out, and then we'll go to the McGuinty government and ask them to end it. Jane. This doesn't sound like deadlock. Everybody knows about the virtual deadlock. I think the minister has an obligation to explain where the clear deadlock arrives. Speaker, today I rise to speak to the legislation that would require an end to the deadlock labour dispute between York University and the Canadian Union of Public Employees, Local 3903. Their efforts at establishing deadlock, deadlock, deadlock are flimsy at best. We are here to deal with a clear deadlock between York University and QP that has come about in this 12-week strike despite extensive attempts at mediation. It, if it is the ministry person who went in there for one day, the ministry person made it very clear that it was York University's refusal to bargain that was causing this, not a clear deadlock between the two sides. Does that sound like deadlock? No, what it sounds like is a, a university that's saying we're not going to bargain. Dictatorship. Let me give you another example. When he stood here and he talked and he tried to make the case about the clear and present deadlock that was taking well, that was there, he never once made the case for where that exists. We have respect for the collective bargaining process. We allowed the collective bargaining process to proceed until a deadlock took place. The only thing this government could hang its hat on when it introduced this legislation is something they call deadlock. There remains a clear deadlock. Now, it's very clear what the minister had to say. He's not saying that this is an essential service. He's not saying it's a vital state administration, and he's not saying it's a national crisis. What he is hinging everything in this bill upon is the clear deadlock. Deadlock, 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 deadlock. Member for Thornhill. Deadlock, 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 deadlock. How many more times do I have to say it? Do you know how I know it's deadlocked? I say to the leader of the third party, because I've been there and you haven't. Let's vote on this bill. My colleague uh, for the Conservatives, and I appreciate his philosophical position, I just have to say to him, repeating the words deadlock, 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 deadlock does not make it so. Now, while students should be in class moving forward with their education, you are presiding over yet another deadlock. Deadlock. The university refused to bargain. The three weeks over Christmas, they just refused to bargain. That doesn't sound like deadlock. Deadlock. Because without evidence of a clear deadlock, this is an arbitrary measure that breaches the Constitution. And I asked that question at the outset before I make any other statement. If someone has that clear deadlock, if you can show evidence of that which is sustainable in a court, and this may in fact be challenged in a court, please present it to me and to this legislature.